What's up Ozones? welcome to the Ozone and welcome to another summary video. Now today we are going to be going through the third story in the second book, which is B7 in Haps. So, this one is a very, very, very interesting story, if not one of my favourite stories out of the six that we've had in Tales from the Pizzaplex. So, this one is interesting lore-wise, uh, it's quite emotional in some points, and uh, it's also kind of terrifying. So this is going to be interesting. If you enjoy this video, then make sure you like it and you subscribe. And uh, comment your theories on it below because there's a lot to talk about in this one. So I have seven pages of notes today. I can't really show you, but one, two, three. Yeah, I have seven pages of notes. That's a lot for these videos. So it might take some time to get through, but we're going to get through it anyway. So, we start with Billy, who at the time is five years old, but we're told that when he was three, he had to get loads of injections because he was sick for some unknown reason. Um, now, at the time, five years old. He watches Freddy and Friends. This is so cool. He watches Freddy and Friends on the TV, and Billy's mum says that he... Uh, sorry, yeah, Billy's mum says that Billy and his father are becoming more and more alike, and that's something to um, think about later on in the story when we're theorizing as well. Uh, so he loves the idea of being an animatronic because they're big and strong and they can't feel the bad things that people do. Uh, that's kind of sus. Does that mean that, that his dad beats him or something? I have no idea. But uh, he wants to be an animatronic basically. Um, that That's the whole idea of this story I guess. Uh, but during the commercials he actually acts like a robot. He he's like eh, 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 eh. he's saying that he is an animatronic. He he's actually saying I am an animatronic. And the next morning he still acts like this. He still acts like an animatronic. And Dad asks why he's shouting. Ah, oh, it's it's because I'm an animatronic, Dad. It's because I'm an animatronic. So the dad jokes around with him, pretending to be an anim a robot himself. And Billy laughs in a slow robot voice. Eh, 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 eh. He says his dad needs to go to parts and service. I love this story so far. It's so cute. Billy is an adorable character. Um, but that changes. Anyway, <laughs> so, kindergarten. Uh, Sadie tells him that he's not a robot. Sadie is like a bully in this situation. So Billy pushes her and he is timed out. Uh, and Billy says it's not a real timeout because he wasn't turned off. <laughs> he fully believes that he's an animatronic or he's doing this this hoax and it's amazing. So, uh, oh, and here's one thing I do want to say is throughout this story, we don't really know if Billy is actually a robot or not, which is the scariest part about all of this. As a FNAF theorist, we're creating our own conclusions and it's really difficult to come to one specific conclusion throughout this story. Um, and so that's something that you have to be wary of as well. And I love that about this story. It keeps us thinking. So, uh, yeah, Billy says it's not a real timeout because he hasn't been turned off. And he doesn't like the rain because water. We saw that in the puppet minigame. Uh, uh, the, the teacher, Mrs. Foswick, made a special place for animatronics. And apparently she will program his circuits to read letters and words. Essentially teaching him letters and words. Repro- yeah. Uh, and his friends laugh at him. He, he's losing friends because he's acting more and more strange. He's becoming a robot. He is a robot. Who knows? Now at night when Billy goes to sleep he actually calls it rebooting. Uh, and he- as he's falling asleep he, he overhears a conversation between his mum and his dad. She says that she doesn't know what to do anymore. She wants Billy to be taught separate from other kids. Uh, and Billy starts downloading an update to kind of be more grown up. Uh, kind of like upgrade, I guess, to to uh, a, a higher age robot. Uh, you could say there's some like Charlie Bot parallels in here, but probably not. I don't know. Of course, the parents think that Freddy and Friends had caused this, which is very, very interesting uh, when you turn to Security Breach and see Freddy and Friends on tour, which was kind of the key to unlocking the wall code. Maybe it could have been the key to unlocking Gregory as a robot, 
I'll talk about that in a, another video because that is the most interesting theory that's come out of these books so far, I think. And um, his dad threatens to, to sue Fazbear Entertainment. That is going to do absolutely nothing. If you have read through Help Wanted, you would know Fazbear Entertainment basically owned the world at this point. So that's going to do nothing. I'm sorry, you have no ground to stand on. So Billy has been seeing a psychologist for four months and he's called Dr. Lingstrom and he treated a child who pretended to be an alien for over a year. He thinks it's the it's like coping with anxiety or a way or it is a uh, something to do with anxiety. There's actually a lot in this story about mental health uh, and, it, and it's good. I, I think it's quite quite nice. Um, so because he thinks it's anxiety he uses lavender fragrances from now on. Lavender is supposed to be um, a fragrance that kind of calms you. And he asks the question, why do you think you're an animatronic? And Billy responds, because I am an animatronic. So Billy goes to a private school now and he's in robotics class and Billy learns that robots need oil for their limbs. So he sneaks into his home garage and drinks oil from a can. One day he wakes up and he feels stomach pain. So he goes to the hospital and after he goes to the hospital, or well, yeah, he gets told basically at the hospital, sorry, that uh, by Dr. Reynolds, this is a new doctor, he says that drinking oil is bad, but to be honest, he's drinking the wrong oil, he should be drinking olive oil. What? Four years later, his dad wants to send Billy to an institution, but um, but his mom Vera or Vera doesn't. Um, his dad Dan calls him a freak of a son, and says that he is making our life hell, and he leaves two days later. Uh oh, thing the slipping slipping slide effect or whatever it's called, slippery slope. That's what it's called. Not a slippery slide, what am I on about? Billy is now in 7th grade, we are really seeing him grow, and he's sleeping on a steel table now. I believe he's also sleeping in a basement later, which I didn't write down here, but I, I may as well say it now. Um, and he gets asked if he he's feeling sick, and he says, I feel nothing, I am an animatronic. He requests not to go to school, because there are more uh, more disadvantages, the, the disadvantages outweigh the advantages uh, and he wants to kind of go to the library, uh, pick up some books and just scan the books and pick up information that way. So there is a sad part to this story of course, uh, Vera, his mum as I said before, over the years is starting to look like a wreck, she does not know what to do with this child, I feel very sorry for the mother in this story. So, Billy has this so-called creation day, and I'm going to explain how it works. So, basically, he was five years old when he he wanted to become a robot, or he turned into a robot, or whatever. Uh, that was when he watched Freddy and Friends. On that day, that is his creation day. So, one year after that day, it is his first creation day, but he is actually six years old. So. Right now, I believe it says it, it was his 13th creation day, but he's actually 18 years old. So that is how that works. Um, and on his creation day party, only Vera and Dr. Lingstrom attend. Uh, and they, they really, really seem to think that it's because of Freddy and friends. Some more weird stuff happens, like uh, Billy says the color overloads his circuits. So he requires food to be dyed white in order to eat them. God. Uh, <laughs> Vera is refusing to take this guy to the institution. This guy? His son to the institution. Billy researches lincanth lincanthropy. I think I said that right. Lincanthropy. That sounds right. And that is actually a delusion that one has become a wolf. So we've had someone that's thought they're an alien. People who have thought they're wolves. And... Billy thinks that he's a robot. The real question is, is it just a mental health issue or is he actually a robot? He has survived drinking motor oil, so. <laughs> now Billy wakes up and his mum is nowhere to be found. The bathroom door is shut, he goes in and he finds her submerged body under the water 
and uh, the medicine cabinet is open. She's killed herself. Um, he calmly walks out, like, he completely kind of like, do doesn't ignore it, but kind of shuts away all emotions, turns around, walks out, calls 911, just casually. Uh, and he finds on his laptop that he got for his creation day that she left him some notes, like, here's how to do adulthood and stuff, blah blah blah. And over the next year, he experiences a cognitive dissonance, and that is kind of like, well, well, the way it explains it is that he believes he's an animatronic, but has a sense of self. So it doesn't really, like, his mind doesn't really know what it's doing. In order to cope with this, he's going to need to be a, a full-on animatronic. And in order to do that, of course, he needs to replace his arms and legs with prosthetic limbs. He asks multiple surgeons to do this, and they all just laugh at him and hang up. Um, until until he finds an unlicensed surgeon. Uh, and he's unlicensed because of malpractice in the past. And he's called Doc. He, he's, he's just like, call me Doc. Um, like back to the future. To, yeah, to the future. Uh, Doc says that each surgery will require time to heal, but Billy says that he doesn't want that time. Like, he, just get on with it, kind of. Um, and Doc is, uh, he, he's established in an abandoned mental institution and can't stop maniacally laughing. This guy is hella sus if you ask me. Now Billy says that he doesn't feel anything all the way throughout the story, but does feel the pain of his legs being removed. And he, de he defines these sensations as agony. Yes, my friends, agony is back kind of, not in the way we thought it would be back, but technically it's agony. I mean, technically he is letting out agony because he is in severe pain and he is feeling it. His prosthetics are dark grey, metal and plastic. Uh, when this came up, people thought he was turning into Roxanne. And of course he thought that they would make him stronger, but they weakened him a lot. Like, he is struggling to walk now. But of course, he's just like, okay, I'll shrug it off um, while I still can. Uh, let's get all of my limbs changed. Uh, that will do it. One isn't enough. One doesn't make me strong. All, f all four limbs, all my, both my legs and both my arms, that is going to make me stronger. Uh, there's just a brief mention of Billy passing a junkyard. Excuse me, is this Eleanor or Origins? Is, is Billy Eleanor? <laughs> That is one thing to note, we're never actually told when this takes place. This doesn't have to take place, like, into the security breach era. There is no mention of the Pizzaplex anywhere in the story. So this could be way in the past, it could be in the future. Remember, there is a laptop, so it's probably more in the future than the past, but who knows. Um, so, there is the last limb replacement that happens two days after his, uh, his 20th creation day, or his 25th actual birthday uh, and he is now feeling so slow and so clumsy Ugh. he goes home and this is an interesting detail okay he knocks over two lamps and leaves scrape marks on the floor and drops a glass in the kitchen that is a very obscure detail but one that is specifically called out on this picture do you guys remember this? This was made by one of the artists. I am so sorry, I cannot remember your name right now. I'll probably put it on the screen. But this was actually an image for this story. That is crazy that we've now figured that out. This came up in such a weird time and we never knew what it was, but now we do. This is clearly Billy. If you look at his foot, it's not even a real foot. It's not a sock, it is a prosthetic limb. If you look at his face, it is not human at all. This is clearly Billy, uh, and I don't know why this, this picture was made. It is an amazing image, um, but, you know, I don't know why it was made. So, we now turn to a new part of the story, basically, where um, he's very upset with... He's, he's disappointed with his surgery, so he goes onto a chat room for people who are disappointed with their surgeries. And he meets a girl named Malaya. I think I am saying that right. M Malaya? Malila. Okay, she is called Malaya. Uh, I just spelt it wrong on my first writing. Anyway, uh, so 
Basically, Malaya has an abusive dad and abusive partners, or she's had abusive partners in the past, and he, she asks if Billy is a jerk in, in the manner that he abuses people, and he says, no, I'm not a jerk, I'm completely fine. She starts to like Billy as well. Um, and both of them have one thing in common, they both want their bodies to match who they truly think they are, and this is very cool. Uh, I guess it's trans rep uh, representation, but I don't think it's directly called out to be. Um, but she feels ugly, uh, and so she is having plastic surgery. Uh, Billy now wants face plates, and Malaya thinks that after all of his surgeries, he is really brave. They become boyfriend and girlfriend very quickly and Billy feels almost satisfied. The only thing in life that isn't satisfying right now is the fact that he isn't fully an animatronic yet. So he gets his face surgery and Malaya cannot stand to look at him. Uh, and she starts seeing him less often. Billy gets his eyes dyed black. That's right, he's, got his, he's getting his eyes dyed black just like the picture before that we saw as well. But Malaya still isn't happy, so he keeps doing more, he goes further, because he thinks that that's what Malaya would like. He removes his tongue, and now has to speak using a computer. Malaya bursts into tears and runs out of the house. Malaya apologises, and Billy says that it's not her fault that humans are limited. Billy, please, go back to the child that you were at the beginning of the story. He has his ears removed, he has his head shaved. Uh, Malaya cannot take it anymore and she just leaves. Uh, and here is his true form. He wants to be referred to as B7. Let's go, that, that's the name of the story. Uh, when he is complete, he, a he invites Malaya to his 16th creation day and she says that she's busy. Billy then looks in the mirror and this is heartbreaking. This is actually heartbreaking. He realizes that he isn't actually an animatronic. And he's just completely ruined his life. And he breaks down crying. He cringes at all of the modifications he's ever made. Last page. He calls Doc, asking if any of it can be undone. I want to go back to being human, I want to have a normal life, I want to have a nice little family. But he just laughs and hangs up his phone. He sits in one spot for an entire day, contemplating everything. I mean, I would too if I had the sudden realisation that everything I'd been doing for the past, what, 15, 18 years I think it was, if everything was wrong, like I shouldn't have been doing what I've been doing, I have missed out an entire lifetime basically. He puts on his dad's clothes, which is lore significant of course, because at the beginning of the story we said that they looked alike. And he remembers the night that he became an animatronic. And he goes for a night drive. He drives to the junkyard of all places and curls up inside an old car. He wakes up to the sound of machinery and to a man at a control panel. The machine crushes Billy. The pain is excruciating and blood splatters everywhere. And seeing the blood reminded him of who he truly was as his consciousness gave in and let go. What a fantastic story. That honestly, as I said, is very scary to think about but also quite emotional and has a lot to do with mental illness. I'm, I'm assuming the story was that Billy literally had a mental illness. He wasn't an animatronic. He, was, he just thought he was an animatronic and that's why he, um, he was going crazy with all of these modifications and stuff. As it's said in the story, there are people who think they are wolves. There are people who think that they are, al are aliens and those are just mental health issues. Uh, Billy was, wasn't actually a robot which is terrifying to think about. So, what do you think actually happened in the story? I believe, like the parents say, it was Freddy and Friends that activated him to uh, kind of become this monstrosity. Uh, so it's Fazbear Entertainment's fault again. God. 
everything these days is being blamed on Fazbear Entertainment. They are a stupid company. They should, they, they yeah, they need to go to court. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. We're going to cover the epilogue very soon, so stay tuned for that. Subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching, and goodbye.